Is there really any way I'm gonna be able to paint in layers with this slop? Looks more like gas station cheese to me. Welcome to T-Core, I'm your host Creed, and today I'm going to race a 3D printer. What are you talking about, bro? 3D printers run about as fast as your refrigerator. You're gonna roll it down a hill? <laughs> Obviously, I'm not talking about a foot race. I'm gonna beat it at a benchy test. What's a benchy? You know what a benchy is, you're me. Yeah, but they might not know. You need to get better at explaining things. That's why I'm here, to ask the questions that you keep forgetting to answer. Fair enough. Okay, a benchy has a lot of features that can be difficult for a 3D printer. And so it's a great test to see if something isn't calibrated correctly or if something is misaligned. It's also a great indicator for how fast a printer is against its competitors, which today is gonna be me. I'm not gonna start extruding film out of my fingers if that's what you're looking for. Then what? Well, my neighbor was talking to me about how he was using acetone to fix the parts of his car that are made from ABS plastic. So it turns out ABS is acrylonitrile, butadine, and a styrene. Now, butadine and styrene are soluble in acetone, which means they will soften and almost entirely break down. So what we're doing with the acetone is essentially pulling apart that polymer matrix that makes up the ABS plastic and allowing the plastic to be essentially just softer because we're softening that matrix. So we're just allowing that plastic to be in a liquid state with the addition of that acetone. So what it's doing is it's effectively liquefying that ABS matrix. Now, while it's in its liquid state, it can be quite useful as you'll see. Now, it's important to note that as the acetone evaporates, these fumes are acetone fumes. So make sure you're in a well-ventilated area that you have fans going or something. It may be important to wear a mask. And then also it's important to note that uh, the fumes that are coming off of this are likely going to be pretty flammable. You don't want this to catch on fire. Make sure you have a responsible adult with you if you're trying out anything like this. The polymer matrix binds again, causing the whole slurry to harden and it creates a, a strong, flexible waterproofing layer that's really quite useful. So we got to thinking about what could the slurry be useful for? Could we 3D paint? Are you gonna send all these nice people those dumb glasses or something? No, I'm gonna paint in plastic layers. Now, I'm no artist, so this is gonna look terrible, but ludicrous mode on the bamboo printer sometimes has its struggles as well. You already tested this. You know it doesn't work like that. They don't know that. Plus, you've seen what happens. You know that I cheated. Er, um, I mean, uh, ch changed uh, in this transition. I watch a lot of creators on various channels that will use foam as part of their either RC build or whatever they're doing. And they'll use that 3M glue, which is great. And it's kind of the only thing that really works for that stuff. But I wanted to see if this would work for that as well. So I did a test and it seems to work pretty well as long as you just do a layer that's maybe an inch or two wide on either side of the break. If you put it in the middle like wood glue, the acetone evaporates into that foam and really just melts it away, creating a cavity in your wing or whatever it is. So that wouldn't be ideal. However, if you do just do that little layer around the edges of that crack all the way around, it creates this kind of sheet of plastic that binds itself to each section of the break, as well as seeps in just a little bit to the crack, binding the edges of the crack, and again, itself in that little bit thicker layer. And it's actually a little bit flexible. It's pretty dang durable. I would say that it would be almost as strong as that original. Wow. Wow. And that's the result we were looking for. It's really impressive. Okay, cool, but what else? Well, I'm glad you asked. And not just because transitions are hard, but because I'm actually really excited to show you the next test. As a dad, I do a lot of park playtime. And there's one park in particular that we like to go to that has a river running next to it. Now, I don't know about you, but I always loved making boats and trying to float them down the river. Okay, so am I gonna make the benching now, you ask? Almost. Instead, I'm gonna combine this with something that my son loves origami. I'm gonna make a paper boat and see if I can waterproof it. Makes sense, right? And paper's pretty vulnerable to water, so it seems like a pretty good test. You can't really see it there, but I am waterproofing a piece of paper. I'm also gonna fold a boat real quick. Okay, I'll add this big one here. Uh, no contest whatsoever. There's, It's still dry as a bone in there. 
Robertson, another Torx, and Allen, another flathead. Oh, let's see it. That's it. Ah, uh, woo! <laughs> it still floats. That's awesome. Nice. It's totally sopping wet. <laughs> totally sopping wet and will float forever. So it's pretty obvious that it worked well as a semi-flexible waterproofing layer. It worked pretty well as a foam glue. So I wondered if it would work well as a durability layer as well. Something that I could paint on over and over again as the surface wears out. Now, if you've done any type of work with RC cars, you may know what I'm talking about here. I'm not gonna do the whole bottom. I'm just gonna do the part that's touching the ground and I'm gonna do the connection points. So I'm gonna leave this whole section. I don't think there's a point to that one. I'd say that's, whoa, well, I'd say that's pretty good. Wouldn't you? It's pretty well covered on all the important bits. All right, now I'm gonna do the sides in yellow. Noise. Do you guys hear that? Here. It's the sound of you hitting the subscribe button. <laughs> I need to paint the whole thing, huh? I really do. To me, that looks like a monster truck jump. All right, wish me luck. Oh. Uh, ready, set, go. Nice! So you're probably wondering why I need to cheat. As I was doing this test previously, when I was adding each individual layer after that first layer, it was melting into the previous layer. The acetone was binding both layers, but then it was seeping into the lower layers, making it so every single consecutive layer was taking longer and longer and longer to dry. And by three layers, it was already at like 24 hours. There's no way I was gonna beat a bamboo printer in ludicrous mode. So I had to come up with something else. Okay, so there we have our 3D painted bedsheet. All right, now I'm using clear ABS plastic here that I have added some wood bark powder to. It's actually white oak bark powder, and I didn't do that for any reason other than I find it to be poetic. Wooden boat, 3D painted. I don't know, it's breaking rules. I think it's fun. I did say that I would 3D paint a benchy. I didn't say that I would build it from the ground up. Gotta read the fine print. So how did the printer do? Hey, this looks pretty good. Wait, what is that? Oh, uh, yeah, I cheated. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I, I did your work. <laughs> <laughs> So since his 3D printer technically printed both benches anyway, I'd say that's a, a fair trophy. Thanks for being a good sport, James. But we did learn something today. ABS slurry can do a lot of things. It can waterproof, it can glue, it can protect, but replacing a 3D printer isn't exactly one of them. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and smash that bell. We'll see you in the next one.